right, so this is part two of my chat with Professor Tim Wilson. If you haven't started with part one, I fear you are going to be just a little bit lost. So jump back over there and watch that one first. But Tim is now one of my favorite humans. And since he's invited us to come visit, I'm assuming we are practically family. I mean, who doesn't want an Uncle Tim? I know I certainly do. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy this talk with Tim. Oh, uh, Tim, you kill me. Uh, something you were talking about earlier, uh, that I'm like way back in time, is uh, you were talking about how uh, when Richard, you know, made all those uh, snide comments, and that's that's what he was there to do, right? He was there to play that character, yeah. and and he played it to the best of his ability. So I'm not faulting him. I, I you know, I thought, you know, he took on that but it, role. But it, 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 it was cruel. Yeah, yeah. But you said that it it really affected you, and so what's interesting is the viewer. We see all the yeah, angles, they didn't show you that. right? We see yep, you, we see all the cameras, we see all the people, all of their mannerisms, everything they're doing, and yet you're in a room and all you see is text on a screen, and so that's your world for however long you're in there, and so you have to you have to read everything in between the lines, which I have never been truly that good at. So you take everything at face value and. Um, I yeah, guess you're extremely empathetic anyway. in that, right? I, I, I do that anyway. I, you know, it's partly my academic training. You know, um, I, I, I love textual criticism. You give, you give me four Gospels. I'm very happy telling you which one was written first. You give me, you give me an essay as a student, and I'll tell you who you copied from if you really push me. Um, but I tend to be kind if I can right. be. I, I think, well, you know, you've made an effort for me. Yeah. I know most of I know most of this is from the encyclopedia, but you made the effort and well done. But this is I'm talking about the emotional aspect. You're reading in that and you're right, it's you're breathing that in and you're yeah, affecting yeah, your emotions with all of that. Isn't that exhausting to only, do that all the time? Only no, only the nastiness is, is exhausting and sad. But but most of it you know most of it isn't real. Mm -hmm. Um, so in the case of Sammy James, mm -hmm. who I like enormously, by the way, um, I, I, I knew, I, I knew that he wasn't Sammy. Oh yes. And yeah. I, you intuited that I, almost instantaneously. Oh, almost instantly. I, I don't, I don't know whether it says in the, in the show, but I, but I remember saying, huh, mother and child, that's worked for 2000 years. <laughs> um, I thought it was a good line. If they didn't use it in the show, they were rather silly not to, but I gave them a very good line there, um, and uh, I'd be rather de depressed if I didn't use it. But I, I haven't seen most of the show, so I don't That's know. Um, and people do tell me things, and I think, oh, yeah, yeah, well, I did say that. Um, there's some things which I didn't say in the same context, of course. Uh, and people, I, I know people have complained about things being edited out of sequence to make them look or more evil or whatever yeah. um but um and and in fact uh i i i think the circle is probably better than most most shows from that point of view uh the uh, the circle production company was set up by a man called stephen lambert on the back of a program um about the queen and i don't know whether he was i think he was the producer in that program or one of the producers in the program and they got into trouble uh, because there was a photo shoot with Annie Leibovitz. And um, uh, and in the photo shoot, the Queen is wearing her crown. And Annie Leibovitz, Leibovitz says, uh, you, you, my, my Majesty, uh, maybe, we could, maybe we could do a photograph with, with, with uh, and, and you could lose the crown. She says, lose the crown? I don't know how long it takes to put this thing on. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's suddenly, uh, we, we saw this. And then we we heard this this vocal. It's so, so long taken. It's really really very difficult putting this on. Um, and as she was charging down a corridor at breakneck speed, uh, with the crown and the and, and the garter robes on, and people running after her, and it looked like the queen was running off in a huff. And that was definitely how the trailer sold us the program. And of course, people tuned in in their millions to see the queen having a temper tantrum and a hissy fit in crowd mm -hmm. and of course it wasn't true the scene of her walking at some speed is just the way the queen normally walks which is tiny lady like tom cruise they have to walk fast tom cruise runs um <laughs> and um, you know 
It could it could have been Tom Cruise. Close half close your eyes and that would be Tom Cruise, you know. Yeah, it is crown. <laughs> Mission impossible. <laughs> and um so there's the Queen. She she she's go, just going from one meeting to another. And by by um editing that out of sequence, they made it look more shocking than it really was. It wasn't shocking at all. It was just the Queen doing her normal routine of Having a portrait painted, having a portrait photograph taken. How lovely. Where are you from? Have you come from? How nice. <laughs> um, and, um, I'm going to open Parliament. Uh, and, so Stephen Lambert was one, of the, was one of the producers on this. And he, I don't know whether he resigned or whether he was fired. The impression we got is that he resigned. You know, maybe that was, maybe that was encouraged. And about a year later, there was an article in a newspaper uh, the Guardian, where he's painted almost in hagiographic detail uh, as somebody who wants to carry the banner for more moral television making. And he doesn't want things to be edited out of order. Um, and, 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 and he was he was citing this program about the Queen and setting up his own production company. And that's the production company that made the circle. So I thought when I when, when you go back to that rainy day in Cambridge. I thought, well, you know, if this is the production company that's making this, I'm in fairly safe hands. Because they've got a moral bias. Hmm. Um, I still think there's further we can go. I still think people who are involved in any form of television entertainment need to be treated professionally. Um, but, but, you know, and, and, and I also think being edited out of sequence is perhaps not ideal. Um, but uh, well, my cat's heart, heart rate is looking a little bit dodgy. I need to give him some medicine. Um, yeah, so that's it, really. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not, um, I don't edit much. I do audio cleanup, but I'm kind of a fan of whatever's in the show is in the show. And I, I like to hear those little interstitial parts, right? The things that Bring it all together. I love going down rabbit holes. To me, that's where the story actually lies, not the the framework which you're trying to force me into. I like everything that happens in between. That's to well, I'm, I, I must say, rab rabbit holes are my thing. But um, <laughs> but, but e e e e e equally, you know, I I like to give the impression of order. I, I do like things to be. <laughs> well, that's nothing I would order. accuse you of, Tim. Re order. <laughs> Really? <laughs> I, thought, I, I, I thought I was. I thought I was fairly ordered and fairly. No, no. Fairly you stiff. are. Yeah, you do. Because you, 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 you go down one hole, and then that leads to another, and then another. It's. Uh, it's. And then I pop up in my. I pop up in my original hole. You I do. Hope. You do. Other, otherwise, otherwise, we're going to have one of those French moments on the stairs. Um. <laughs> I feel like uh, I feel like we're in a prairie dog mound where they have lots of little tunnels all over the place and we keep Absolutely. popping. It's, like, like, it's fantastic. Like the beginning, like the beginning of Winnie the Pooh and the blustery day. <laughs> is that, a, is that a fairy dog? I can't remember. <laughs> you've got, you've got a prairie, a prairie dog at the beginning of one of the Indiana Jones films as well. I know. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I know we touched on it just momentarily, but you said as a child, you were already gifted with art and that was kind of suppressed. How long did you, Kind of quit drawing for a little while before you picked it back up. Oh, I never, I, I, I never quit. Oh, okay, okay. I, I, I never quit. I just didn't, I, I just didn't, I just thought, well, you know, if this is the ghastliness that I've got to deal with if I'm doing this with other people, I don't think I want to do this professionally. Mm. Um, and I sort of steered towards the church, which I suppose was the only, the only form of theatre that I could access. Hmm. Um, and, uh, and that became my thing. So, but you you grew up in the church and like via your parents, right? And then, uh, so you were you were adopted at a young age, and you're yeah 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 yeah. yeah. But uh, my parents weren't particularly religious, I suppose. Okay, so that's just something you found. Yes, and and and, and at school, um, my 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 school was a religious school, so it was it, it was a sort of, I, I felt it was a fairly safe environment. It wasn't that safe. There was a lot of there was a lot of nastiness going on there, um, and and in fact, in in, in my prep school, the, 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 the first school I was sent away to, um, there was a teacher there whose only job was to beat little boys. Um, he was a priest, uh, and um, 
and and he used to punish the entire school if, if, if somebody had done something particularly wrong. He'd get everybody running out, running around the grounds of the school, and then he'd stand and he'd stand with his shotgun and and and, and threaten to shoot boys who were late. And in fact, he, he did shoot. He did shoot. I, I I don't know I don't know what he had in had it had in the shotgun now, but you know people did go off to the off to the matron and, compl and complain of bruises. Um, I, I I I was lucky. I was never I was never targeted. Wow, but, uh, that's uh... pure luck. But uh, he wasn't there. He wasn't crazy. there for very long once I got there. But um, yeah, uh, um, and, uh, and and there were other there were other goings on which were more which which I think today's news is more is more interested in. But uh, I, I I was always interested in the fact that there was there was this appalling brutality in the school, um, and, um, and 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 so there wasn't really I didn't really get that sense of a lot of bullying going on among the children. Because we were bullied by the staff. Gotcha. Did it kind of um, encourage you guys to band together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, it was difficult, but I, um, yeah. Hmm. I guess that teaches and you I, a, a reliance I, 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 on the I, the people you're there with, right? Yeah, yeah. It only goes so far, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. But then you eventually. You eventually found a church because of school, and I guess you said that was kind of the only theater. And so, what? I mean, what? The school was run by priests, so you know it just seemed natural. That's where and that's where you go. Um, and uh, and I joined a monastery. I was thrown out for applying to Oxford without permission. Um, and uh, I thought, where do I go now? And Oxford wouldn't let me change to another subject, so I I stuck with it, and um, I did a lot of theater. And I did a lot of art. I um, I ran out of money, so I basically survived by drawing uh, posters and, um, and 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 cards and things for people. So I think we, uh, we kind of just ran right over that. But you were a monk for a little while, and then I was, and then Oxford came along, and yeah, yeah. So so do do do, do you see how spectacularly well I just sort of tossed that one yes, out? Yes, yes. Uh, and when I was. <laughs> You know, it's it's such a good, such a good one liner. When I was a monk, blah 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 blah, um, and um, you know, as if everybody is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it, it it was interesting. I I just think um, I wasn't good at obedience, and I do think obedience to some to some sort of jumped up superior is rather ridiculous. Mm. Um, but. Uh, um, you definitely strike me as a I, color outside the lines I, kind of kid. Yeah, I don't think I've ever been. I don't think I've ever felt so secure as I did when I was a monk. I, 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 it, it, it is a recipe for security. I can see why it's attractive. It seems. Did you find it somewhat mundane? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Mundane when you're thinking of, of, of a life of prayer doesn't seem to wit, doesn't seem to fit, does it? But you're quite right. You're quite right. It it, it was often quite dull. Yeah, routine, um, right? The, 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 the dull. Uh, but you know, since then, I found the dull terribly attractive. Um, you, you know, the, the, the dull is good. You need the dull. Um, I regard myself as very boring. Oh, well, it's good. Nobody's taking um, your opinion on that then. Hum humdrum, I think is you know. And I like I like being humdrum. I like being sort of. You know, I, there's nothing I like more than just sitting at my desk, drawing or working. Um, and, and my partner's just just got back. We'll tell we'll, 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 we'll tell you. You know, I I can sit here for a twelve hours at a stretch, comfortably. That's interesting. Occasionally getting up to make tea. <laughs> uh, you know, occasionally the cats call, but but I just get on with it. Well, I see you also. <laughs> Kind of, uh, you've yeah, you've had a relationship with the theater for a long time too. I, I saw you've done some some direction, some set design. I mean, yes. it sounds like you've often, kind of done the often, gambit. Often together, and I and and, and I, I've got nice I've got nice reviews as well. I did the I did the London revival of of Sondheim's Assassins. Um, I was involved in some other bits and pieces, but, but uh, you know, to to have your to have your hands on. Um, on uh, on a Sondheim show is quite is, is quite exciting. Do you um, find direction or maybe being behind the scenes fulfilling in a different way than it does when you're standing on the stage? Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, direction, I think, is... When you first start directing, you think you're going to stand up and you're going to say, do it like this. No, I don't do it like that. I do it like this. And you get up and demonstrate, and you get everybody um, pretending to be Tim, and it, it doesn't work. And then you pull back a little bit more, and you do a sort of sandwich, which is how I think most teachers are stuck. Um, I love what you're doing, but don't do it like that. Do it like this. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, most teachers are stuck in that in that world, where basically they're trying to pass off their criticism as something positive, positive. and it doesn't work. People see through it. And finally, there's a point at which you suddenly realize that all you have to do is set up an environment where creativity can take place. And if you set up the environment, people around you who are professionals will produce something better than you could possibly have imagined. Mm. And that will be done under your influence. So yes, you can, to a certain extent, take some credit for that. Um, and all you are basically doing is saying, that's great, stop there, and we'll use that. And they often don't even know what they've done. And you say, you've just done that. And you say, did I? <laughs> do it again, go on, do it again. And, and, and you, become, you become the ideal audience. So rather than somebody who is giving orders, rather than somebody who is directing um, this group of people, you become the person to whom people direct their performance. Hmm. You become the arbiter of taste. Um, and uh, I, I, I think I got to that point. And that then became the way I started teaching. Um, and uh, I hope I don't lose that. You know, that always fascinates me. Um, how something seemingly completely unrelated will so positively impact other parts of your life in ways you never expected. Yeah. And you want to encourage, you, you want to encourage other people because they will make you better. Absolutely. And I find no experience is wasted. I, well, I say that I, I feel like very few experiences are wasted. Maybe me sitting mm. on the couch all day and just watching TV isn't, you know, going to move the needle well, much, I, I, but in the in in the last year or so, I've thought to myself, oh, there there are certain there is one certain event I probably wouldn't have done if I'd been given a choice. If I knew what was going to follow it, I wouldn't have done it. <laughs> and then I think, well, I enjoyed, I enjoyed that moment. And things like that uh, also uh, put you on the path to where you are now, right? So, ultimately, it's part of you, you take, and you, part of your story and journey. It's very difficult to take one part of your life and say, I, I prefer not to have had that. Yeah. Because I mean, um, you got to think everything positive that happened after that, if you hadn't been in that moment, you hadn't done that thing, the events of the future would have, you know, drastically been altered. It's true. It's true. But, you know, sitting here now, I do worry what my future is going to be. Um, because I had it very clearly mapped out before I did the circle. And it's not clearly mapped out now. Isn't that kind um, of exciting, though? Not from where I'm sitting. Huh. From where I'm sitting, I'm thinking... This, 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 this is part of the thing I want to reform. I don't think anybody should be put in this position. Um, certainly not somebody who's at the beginning of their career. Um, they shouldn't be put in this position where they are used by an entertainment industry and they're not given a way forward. Um, you can think of, um, or, or actually seeing it blocked, and then you have to struggle terribly hard to break through that. Mm. Um, and for what reason? For somebody's cheap entertainment. It doesn't do anybody any any favours. Um, if, 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 if you go back to George Bernard Shaw, I remember um, one of my friends, his mother was a sort of very famous 1950s actress, and um, she. I remember having tea with her once, and she said... When when I was playing Saint Joan, and I I, I I wrote George Bernard Shaw, and I said, um, um, "How should I play it?" He wrote back, and this is the this is the postcard he sent me, and she she showed me this postcard, and George Bernard Shaw had written on it, "Just say the word." <laughs> um, but uh, but <laughs> extraordinary, really. Um, but uh, so so you go back to 
GBS and, and Pygmalion, and it's in there. Or you can, or, or, or if, if, if you want to hear Julie Andrews again, uh, which of course I do, you can go to My Fair Lady, and it's in there as well. And Julie Andrews slightly misunderstands uh, the story of Pygmalion. She, she's described it once or twice as a Cinderella story because she then went on and did uh, Roger and Hammerstein's Cinderella as, you know, for um, CBS. I was going to say IBS. That's not quite the same thing, is it? <laughs> um, and um, It all comes back uh, to that with you, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's impossible to avoid it. It's, it, it yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, um, in, in, in both the play and the musical... Uh, you've got this story of a of a poor girl in Covent Garden, plucked out of obscurity for a joke, for rich people's entertainment. Uh, in a month, I could transform this flower girl into a duchess and pass her off in an embassy court ball, um, and she she wins the bet for Higgins. Uh, and then comes this great line. She says, what's to become of me? What's to become of me? And Higgins says, you know, Rex Harrison, remember, well, you could always marry uh, Freddie Ainsworth Hill. Or Pickering could set you up in a shop. Um, and uh, she says, she says, I was better than that when I was in Covent Garden. I sold flowers. I didn't sell myself. And people who are in reality shows are faced with this choice. And many people I know are faced with this choice. They can either sell bikinis for ASOS, you know, become the Primark queen of, um, of Instagram, <laughs> or they can do only fans and sell, and, and sell themselves in cheap porn. That is Eliza Doolittle. And that should not be the choice that people face when they've been on your screens for a month or two months regularly, night after night on primetime television. That should not be the price. That should not be the um, their future. They should have a roadmap, and particularly if they've been successful, there should be a roadmap. And that is the responsibility of the studios. And I get quite passionate about that, I'm afraid. I'm so sorry. No, no, I love it. I love seeing all sides of it. <laughs> you, are, I don't, I, you are a complete I human. I never apologize yeah. for how you think or feel. There we are. There we are. Anyway, that's um. So, so, so I am thinking about that at, at the moment because I'm thinking there's another group of people now who are coming out of Circle Celebrity and Celebrity Three. We filmed it a while ago. They're going to be thrust into the limelight, and they're going to have to deal with this. And then there is no roadmap. There still isn't a roadmap, mm. and there isn't a roadmap for people on all these other shows and. I've now met so many people from Survivor and their lives are not clear. Um, those people who had a clear life beforehand, some of them have managed to get back to it. Um, some people have got involved in politics before and they've managed, you know, they have plans to get involved afterwards or they have got involved afterwards. Like, for example, the wonderful lady in New York who I spoke to a while ago um, who's standing for what is it um anyway the law thing mm. um and uh i hope she's successful um uh, shuby um in the american circle you know he, he 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 was involved in politics before and i think he will be involved in politics again um but for the majority of people what are they doing slide into obscurity I get they dominate television for that short period of time and they're good enough for your telly but they're not good enough for life mm. why they have no representation they have no professional support they have no roadmap i think this is abuse mm. and and at its worst at its worst you have a catalog of 43 deaths by suicide mm. over the years and innumerable stories of mental health problems. Um, if somebody's got mental health problems, you know, now we've got a law in Britain, regulation in Britain, that if you are on a reality show, it's, it's recent. If you're on a reality show, you should have 18 months of of um, psychiatric support available after the show. Wow. 
Um, well, actually, that was already in place when I did the circle. So the law which came in afterwards simply confirms reality as it is. But that seems to me to be absurd. I can't think of any other job that you would do where the only thing you get out of it is access to mental health care. Um, and if that is the case, if you need mental health care, what are we saying? Are we saying you weren't properly vetted before you went on the show? Or the show is so is such a ghastly experience that you need serious mental health care afterwards. It doesn't. It doesn't say anything positive about an industry which is extraordinarily um, creative and commands enormous popularity. What it suggests is, is this is a gladiatorial combat. Hmm. You know, I, some of the most gifted entertainers, the people I enjoy the most, have a lot of demons. And a lot of them are comedians, right? So I don't know. I, I watch Robin. a lot of podcasts that you know are, are really based around comedians, and you virtually hear every single one of them talking about how they've had years in therapy and they're finally getting to a better place. And and so you know, I think a lot of folks that you know want to be in entertainment crave that that reassurance. Probably have some demons to begin with. If you if you're involved in entertainment, you need support. And I think the starting point is you need professional support. So to take somebody um, and put them in mainstream entertainment without support is heartless. Mm. Is heartless and exploitative and wrong. Full stop. And to then throw psychiatry at them as if they're crazy <laughs> is insulting. I, I, I can't I can't think of any better way of describing it. Um, what does that say about us that we want to watch people that are, you know, that, like you said, gladiatorially, that we want them to be um, precisely, precisely. I all, 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 all I can say, all I, all I can say is I'm really grateful to God that I, that I avoided this form of entertainment until I was in it. <laughs> having been in it, having been in it. I feel it's now my duty to watch as much of it as possible. So, and when I watch it, I'm saying, "Oh, that's that's production." And, and people who are with me say, "No, no, you always say this, Tim. You always say this." Well, I know I do always yeah. say this because I'm right, and because I know significantly more about what's going on than than you do. Because I've been on the inside. I've seen. I've I've seen the Wizard of Oz. You know. You know what I like to think about too is sometimes like uh, when you're watching reality TV. Somebody will walk into a room and they're so surprised by something. But then you have to remember, hey, there's a film crew that's in there. There's a sound guy that's already in that room. There's lighting that's in that room. You know, this is all produced, right? There's, there's yeah. very little. That's well, in the case this. in the case of the circle, I can I can testify, there's no one in the room. Right, right, right. You guys just have those cameras everywhere. Ju you just have these remotely controlled cameras. But I can also say, by the time we got to the end of the shoot. I knew who was on each camera. Hmm. I knew who was operating. I knew them by name. Hmm. And I would say, hello, so-and-so, and, and the camera would nod. <laughs> the camera would nod. And I think, yeah, I'm right. I'm right. Um, and, uh, yeah, That's fine. you have... I, I, and uh, and uh, communication. I could have a communication. I, I could have direct communication with Woody. And I knew how that scene was being edited. Mm. I knew how he would respond because when you're on your own and when you don't trust what's being said, you have a sort of sixth sense which cuts in. And uh, and in my case, you know, that's also a sense of being a director. So I was thinking, oh, my God, to see, now, you know, this, this is magic because they'll, they'll have to cross cut this. Uh, with, uh, with with Jay looking through her book to see where what a soffit is, <laughs> it'd be hilarious. And I I I I don't remember, but I think I, I you know I, I was I was barely able to contain myself giggling on the bed. I, it, it, I I wasn't giggling about sort of exposing Katie or Jay. I was giggling about the way that it was going to be cross cut, yeah. and that I had, I just set this up. As perfect television. Oh yeah, I haven't seen the I haven't seen the episode. But you were I'm pretty certain. It was magnificent. It was like you were editing right. that scene yourself. <laughs> I was editing it myself. I knew exactly how it was going. It was hilarious. Uh, and the same thing with Woody. In fact, somebody did send me a, 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 the scene with Woody and the and the goosebumps. I don't know if you've seen this yet, um, but uh, I in my mind it's in close up. 
but in fact, in the in the reality, it's a long shot. And I thought, you know, but I knew he was doing this. I knew it. I could see it. And to actually see it in real life, to see what they actually broadcast, is slightly different to what I imagined. But it, it's it, it's not that I was sort of thinking conceptually. I can see yeah. it. And I could see the J scene as well. And what people have described to me of that, it's exactly mm. what I saw in my mind at the time. Um, and that's, and that, and that's, what you, that's partly something to do with the fact that I was a director, I think. And the fact that I think visually. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and with the J thing, I remember production was getting really quite irritated with me because I was saying, this, is, th th this isn't J, this is his mother. <laughs> How do you know? It's obvious. Well, what's your what's your logical sequence? You have to explain to us. Well, I can't really. I can't. <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's just holistic. I just know. And um, uh, and 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 somehow they people get bewitched by the idea that I've got professor in front of my name, and they think, oh, he's sort of Einstein. He's terribly logical. Logic doesn't enter into it. I, I'm the most illogical person in the world. <laughs> I think. I think. Here is my conclusion. Now let's find some reasons to get there. <laughs> um, it's not the other way round. That's hilarious. Um, you know, the cake comes first, and then we work out what, 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 what ingredients we put in it. All right. Well, I tell you what, we are at the the two hour mark, and I want to be very respectful of oh, your. So sorry, no, I want to be respectful we... of your time. Um, I could quite crazy. literally sit here and talk to you all afternoon. I have no qualms with that. Um, but to the to, well, I hope I hope I haven't been too boring. No, to... no. To put a bow on what you had said, um, you have a spirit and a charisma that I feel like can't be contained. And I would, I think the world would be loath to not have you continually injected into it. So I I hope whatever. <laughs> You just put so much positivity and so much optimism out there. I more now more than ever is something that I want, and I I think the world desperately needs uh, more Tim, more Professor Tim. However you want to go, uh, go buy it in it. <laughs> well, I do, I do, I do hope so. I do hope so. Um, and uh, I, 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 at the mo at the moment, I <laughs> at the moment I'm I'm learning all about being trolled. Um, so because I, 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 I've been um, I've been writing a few things about um, Alexei Navalny and so I may find it's impossible for me ever to go back to Russia but um, <laughs> well one of the things uh, we say on the internet is don't feed the trolls so well on the contrary on the contrary I, <laughs> I find I find these trolls they, they, they write things back to me I think well I have to answer them. <laughs> I have to answer got them. more I obligation have to... huh? I have to I have to respond All right. and um, and congratulate them on their beautifully. All right, Tim. Well, if you wanted folks to interact you interact with you rather out on the internet, how would you how would you have them do that? What's your preferred method? Oh, Instagram is very good. Um, doesn't earn me any money, but it's it's so easy to access. And uh, and the best way of doing that is um, Professor underscore Tim underscore Wilson. And Twitter, I'm learning how to twit. Twit. <laughs> tweet. There you are. <laughs> uh, yeah, there we are. I'm learning how to tweet. I've been on Twitter for a little bit longer, actually, uh, because I started, so I, I did some political stuff and I set up Twitter for that. Um, uh, and that's prof underscore Tim underscore Wilson. And then uh, I've got a blog, which is animate hyphen Tim dot com, um, where, where you get some serious stuff. Um, and some drawings, they, they come together. And um, uh, what else? The, the, there's a website called zontalfilmslimited.com. Um, or is it Zontal Films? I think it's zontalfilms.com. Okay. Uh, Zontal is my partner's name. It's Z O N, you'd say Z O N T U L uh -huh. F I L M S. And um, uh, Zontal is a, is a southern Turkish name. So um, and, and it comes from Syriac, ancient Syriac. It means high mountain. So Jesus, who would have spoken a form of ancient Syriac, which we call Aramaic, would have said, come on, mates, let's go up the mountain. And then there would be a transfiguration of various other wonderful things. <laughs> you know? so, um, so he would have all, they would have all been using my partner's name, which I find rather entertaining. Um, and um, so it was Zontal Films. Um, and Zontal Films, you also um, do that on YouTube, right? 
Yeah, so 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 on you on YouTube you look up Zontul film as Z O N T U L M F C Z O N T U L F I L M S L T D Limited, um, and 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 you find you find that on um, YouTube, and uh, uh, YouTube is the preferred thing because uh, if I I like increasing my numbers on YouTube, um, but um, but yeah, it's uh, it, it, it's quite nice to increase the numbers on. Instagram, but it doesn't have much financial reward. Excellent. Well, again, Tim, thank, so, thank and, you. And, 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 and people should tell me on Instagram and on YouTube, particularly, what they want me to talk about. And I'll talk about it. I, I press the, you've been pressing going. people to to send you more uh, more things to talk about. I love that. So um, yeah, happily, I, I, <laughs> I talk about the um, the. the uh, uh, carburetors, if you, if, if you want me to. I know nothing. I don't know how to drive. I, 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 was, I was a wizard on a Massey Ferguson tractor when I was little. About the age of five, I ploughed a very straight line. Um, but, uh, but I didn't know how to switch off, so I had to have somebody to switch my... To, 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 put, to make my tractor stop. That, and stop. That's not a flex I hear from a lot of people. I can I can uh, hoe a straight line in a tractor. That's... Uh... It's pretty impressive. You should put that on the uh, the LinkedIn. <laughs> Add that to the resume. I, I, I think if I was talking about hoeing, I think I would get into trap dress. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Tim, well, thank you, and thanks to all the listeners, and um, we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>